The Pacific Crest Trail is a 2,650 mile long hiking trail in the western United States that extends from the U.S.-Mexico border all the way to the border with Canada. In May of 2021, I set out to hike the entire trail starting at the border with Mexico. And I wanna note that this was not my first long distance hike. Actually in 2015, I through hiked the entire Appalachian Trail, which goes from Georgia to Maine. It's about 2,200 miles long and it goes through 14 states. The Pacific Crest Trail only goes through the three states of California, Oregon, and Washington, but it's usually divided into five different sections. The southernmost section is known as the desert, which is roughly 700 miles long. And going north from there are the other four sections known as the Sierra, Northern California, then Oregon and Washington. Each section has its own unique challenges that I'm not gonna get into right now, but I just wanted to insert this very basic outline on what the PCT is. So with all that said, let's get into the footage that I shot out on the trail. Well, this is where it starts. Oh man, it's gonna be a good few next months. There's Mexico, man. I've never seen the border before. Pretty cool. Just like that, I'm a through hiker again. So one mile down, 26.49 to go. Might be able to see the border. Well, all right, there it is. That's day one in the books. Just trying to ease back into this. Ramen on the menu, creamy chicken. Good old ramen. We meet again. This is Hauser Canyon right here. About to go in and out of that, and then shortly I'll be at Lake Marina. Man, it's a big uphill. Glad I'm doing it early. Lake Marina, finally getting a view. This lizard's got the spot, man. First hiker box that I've seen. I've made it to the Interstate 8 overpass. This is at mile like 27 or something, 26 maybe. Ooh, warm. The wind feels good when we get it. Gorgeous out here. Absolutely gorgeous. Siesta time. On this nice oak tree. It's a hot day today, a lot of climbing. I'm gonna take a couple hours here. sun going down it's nice and cool perfect for hiking that heat is no joke check this out man like forest and then it kind of starts thinning out and then it's like no trees <laughs> pretty cool mile 50 All right, so it's around 12.45 on Saturday, May 15th, and I think I just woke up to an earthquake. It felt like I was in a car and somebody was moving the car, like kicked it with their foot. But I don't know, I could have just been dreaming or something.
The wind on the desert section of the PCT can be incredibly strong at times. It can save you from the heat on a hot afternoon, but oftentimes you simply can't escape from it and it can just be downright annoying. This is the bridge at Scissors Crossing. I slept under this bridge and it was one of the windiest nights I've ever tried to sleep in. At this point, I had gone into the town of Julian. I had my first off-trail resupply here. I also had a little bit of a water illness and I was feeling really bad. I actually considered getting off the trail at this point, which was only like three or four days in. But in the end, I didn't do that. I sucked it up, I got back out on the trail, and I'm really glad I didn't throw in the towel at that point. About a week down now, I just passed 100 miles today actually. Getting back into the swing of through hiking is really difficult and I remember how difficult the AT was or maybe I was just more determined to do it back then when I was a young gun in my 20s. I think I'm going to stick with this again. I'm uh, back in a good mindset. Yesterday was good. Today's been a good day. A weekend only getting to 100 miles. I mean I guess that's pretty good. You know, I'm basically coming off the couch. I wouldn't say I was in tremendous shape starting this but um, you know glad to be out here again. It's a really beautiful trail there's the landscapes it's almost like you wake up there's a view you walk all day and there's a view on the at you're fighting all day to get to a view and then you sit at the viewpoint and you enjoy it but it's almost like out here there's just a view all day a beautiful view it's a really cool trail man i'm definitely loving it out here Gorgeous. Uh, Eagle Rock. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? It's a glider. See? See you later, dude. You don't have to buzz at us, we're not bothering you. Whoa. That was cool. There it is, that's Mount San Jacinto. Might get some rain. Nice to cool everything off for a bit. It's pretty trippy, right? Looks like a koosh ball or something. Is that a lenticular cloud right there? Maybe it's a UFO, man. Oh yeah, look at this water tank. I'm kind of afraid to step on it.
It's actually kind of cold today, cold and windy, which is strange because two days ago it was like boiling hot in here. a lot of blowdowns in this area. This one looks fairly fresh. You can see the grass underneath it is still alive. So uh, a couple days ago, it was really windy up here, but this definitely makes for slow going through here. Still haven't made it to the rock slide. Beautiful section of trail, man. Absolutely gorgeous. Rock slide. That was pretty sketchy, not gonna lie. It's that little step down right there is what's sketchy. It's all good though. There we go, keep going on. Man, San Jacinto is gorgeous. It's an absolutely beautiful day today. Oh yeah, man. So there's my tent. Here's the view for the night. Definitely a good campsite. Not nearly as much wind as I thought. Could have taken that spot down there with a better view, but this was good to be safe because it can get really windy here. Look at this thing. Oh yeah, that's a good water source right there. It's got a flow to it. This is how we do siesta time. Right here. Today I'll head into Idlewild. I'll do a Nero. So I'm only doing like two miles of trail today, but still a Nero. I'll resupply, go back up the Devil Slide and then continue north. So I just did this like two and a half or like two and today, two days in today of southbound. And now I'm gonna be headed back the right direction tomorrow. For the most part doing good. I'm gonna break down my tent here. Just trying to deal with the extreme ups and downs 
of doing a through hike. I've definitely thought about getting off trail several times already. Yeah, man, I'll just go through these intense moments of, of like, fuck this, I'm gonna get off in the next town. That's how I feel. And then, like, I'll just get something to eat, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, and it'll be a completely different feeling of wanting to stay and complete this thing. I feel like if I go home, I mean, I'm not trying to prove anything doing this shit, but if I go home, I'm gonna get depressed in like two weeks. I'm gonna feel like I made the wrong decision. I don't know, but once I get through the desert, I'll be able to reassess like my mileage and estimate if it's actually feasible or not for me to make it all the way to Canada. Having a start le uh, a late start date, it's definitely something that's gonna be a challenge. And if it seems like I'm gonna have to run 30 miles a day after I get through California, then I don't know if it's gonna be worth trying to finish and maybe it would be good to get off. I, I, I'm still committed to trying to make it to Canada. I'm not like setting myself up for failure in my mind. But, or maybe I am. I don't fucking know. Only been on the trail for, let me see, a little over two weeks now. So, don't quite feel like I have my legs yet. Look at this thing, man. Holy shit. Huge. Oh, look at all the windmills. Pretty sure we cross through a windmill field tomorrow, maybe the next day. Heaven on earth. No other way to describe it. Two hundred miles. Here's another post. But according to gut hooks, it was back there a little ways. This lizard, he's meditating. <laughs> Dude, this heat is no fucking joke. I'm like a mile from 
a water faucet. It's almost noon. I was trying to make it, man, but I, I can go like a tenth of a mile and then I just get super hot. So I'm just gonna camp here, just take a nap and I'll get to the water at like four, take a shower under it. And then I gotta go across this heat. I'm on a night hike tonight. Like I just, man, I can't, I can't do it in this heat. Starting to get scared out here. The intense dry heat of the desert on multiple occasions made me feel like I was in over my head on this trail, and perhaps I was, but still I pushed ahead. On another note, if you see a windmill farm, it's probably gonna be windy. This is just before the Interstate 10 underpass, and it was so windy that I thought my glasses were gonna fly off my face. But after some temporary discomfort, there's always a great relief, and this time it came in the form of a location that was protected from the wind and the heat. Made it. I'm at this wind farm. You can see the windmills over there, maybe. And they've put up a cooler with some fresh waters for hikers and just a little break from the sun. It's nice. It's nice in here. It's nice of them to do that. Thank you, wind farm people. I don't know the name of this property, but it's the wind farm right near San Jacinto. Ooh, it's warm out there, man. Those valleys are hot. It's called like, fuck you heat. That's what I'm referring to it as because it's just like, fuck you, you know? Check it out, man. Water in the desert. <laughs> Something you don't see every day. Oh, it's pretty cool. Oh man, you can swim right there. Yeah. Glorious. It's like walking on the beach. Oh. There's nobody around. There's San Jacinto right there. Can't believe I was up and over that one. It's cool. Man, these clouds are definitely giving me a good break from the heat today. <sighs> Much appreciated. You can see the trail down here. You wind through this valley. There's the river I was at. You can kind of see it, maybe. And then the trail winds up and on this ridge. <sighs> a lot of uphill today. So this is pretty cool. You just kind of crisscross this creek a lot. This is uh, Mission Creek but it's nice and shady, lots of green. It's, uh, it's a good break from the heat. It's almost 10 o'clock now. Uh, just trying to find the trail. People put these cairns up. Gut hooks makes it super easy, man. It's just, if you feel like you're off trail, you just pull the app out and make sure you're on the red line. But I can see from the topographic map that we just kind of follow this creek and crisscross. So I'm not gonna get lost. Might bust my ass though, shit. The trail teaches you like not to really worry about where other people are. Just hike your own hike. You'll get there when you get there. But I just feel like I'm always getting somewhere to camp and there's like nobody there. It just doesn't feel like there's that many people out here. I wanna start putting other hikers in these videos, but it's not really like a trail family yet. I don't really have a trail family yet is what I'm saying. So just trying to find somebody my pace that I kind of get along with would be nice. I don't know, man. It, it also wouldn't be the end of the world if I called this hike. You know, like if I left at Big Bear. 
I'd probably bump around and do something in California because I've never been here. Probably go up to Yosemite, maybe the Redwoods, maybe Crater Lake. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I don't know if I'm cut out for this uh, through hiking business anymore. I always wondered, like, could I do it again? Because it was such a highlight of my life. Such like a, a rewarding thing that I did to be able to complete this long trek from Georgia to Maine. It was such a, like, cloud nine is where I was at when I was finished. And I don't know if I'm just trying to chase that feeling back down again. And honestly, even if I go all the way to Canada, is it really going to be as rewarding as the first through hike? I really don't think it will be. I like the pot, the spots of the day where it's like this, where I'm just chilling, but there's a lot of lonely days. It's just me a lot of the time. And you're up on this mountain and you're looking at this desolate landscape and you're the only one. It feels like you're the only one on the planet, which is cool. I like that feeling sometimes, but I don't want to experience that for six months. I don't think that that's healthy. I'm already loner enough. I don't need to be doing that for the next five months. Am I just lost? What's that? Not all who wonder are lost, but some are. I don't know, man. Am I lost? It's such a strong word. It sounds like I'm just lost. I'm hopeless. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with being lost. I think there's people who have houses, big careers, and they feel lost. <laughs> I think feeling lost is a normal part of being a human being if you're being honest with yourself. Man, that's some good creek water right there. That's another thing, my trail name. I'm just gonna stick with Just Mike. That was my trail name from the AT. I thought about doing the whole born again, getting new, getting new trail name. I was definitely open to the idea, but now that I'm like 200 something miles in, everybody, I've just been telling everybody my name's Just Mike. And uh, maybe I'll be getting off trail too in Big Bear. Who knows? Maybe I'll go all the way to Canada. I really don't know, man. I, I really, at this point, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. But right now is good. It's a nice shade spot. There's nobody else here but me. But hey, I got air in my lungs, water in my Gatorade bottle, and I can uh, sit here and realize that I am free. And that's what we all want, right? We all just want to be free. <laughs> all right, everyone, to freedom. Check out that bear bag hang right there, huh? Yours truly. Over this nice dead branch right here. And there it is. Still here in the morning. Which is always good. Yeah, I guess a fire came through here at some point. Two hundred fifty miles. There we go. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's Big Bear Lake right there. We're just to the north of it.
Warm. Dude, check it out, man. 300 miles on the PCT through the hot ass desert. <laughs> oh man. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I camped down there last night. Really nice spot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Echo! Echo, 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 Echo! Oh, I've never heard one like that. <laughs> Dude, I barely saw this. It's a baby rattlesnake right there. Pretty sure that's a diamondback. It's maybe only a little over a foot. There's three snakes in this pond. Check it out. There's one. Over by this rock is two. And then the other guy's swimming under there. That's three. Oh, four. There's four in here. I had to get water out of here. They're all, I'm pretty sure, like harmless garter snakes. I don't know, I guess maybe they're eating the tadpoles. Oh, he's hunting, he's going after shit, look at that. Dude, this is some like National Geographic shit. They're going after the tadpoles. Dude, this is wild. This has been a good stretch. I feel like this is the first stretch that I've really enjoyed. Haven't, haven't felt so beaten down. But yeah, I had a little foot injury. Basically, I saw a physical therapist in Big Bear. I think it was worth the money, for sure. But I got a huge blister on like the ball of my foot. Apparently, I'm not walking properly. I'm not landing with my heel. And um, I'm more like sneaking around, landing on the ball of my foot too much and I have this crazy blister. And apparently I was pinching a nerve in my ankle area or something. And that was causing me to like completely lose feeling in the whole bottom of my right foot. So I was like, well, this can't be good. I don't want to be doing any permanent damage. So I'm glad I decided to go see her. Yeah, the last few days we followed kind of this creek, Deep Creek is the name of it. And it was a really nice stretch, man. The last two like vlogs that I did, I was kind of talking about quitting a lot, but I don't know, this stretch has made me want to push on. Yeah, I think I'm at like mile 328 or something right now. I know once I get to 350, I'll be halfway through the desert. So pretty excited about that. At first, I think I was just kind of like overwhelmed with how difficult the desert is. But now I'm kind of like, Okay, challenge accepted. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and make it, oh, to Cajon Pass today. We pass a McDonald's, a Subway, and apparently there's like three taco trucks. So I'm gonna see if I can hit, in one night, a McDonald's, a Subway, and three taco trucks. <laughs> Whoa, look at the lake, bro. Fucking crazy. 
Yeah, man. Oh yeah, jet skis out. Nobody frowns on a jet ski, right? All right, I gotta make some miles before it starts getting too hot because I really want to get to one of these restaurants tonight. The golden arches up ahead. I gotta do, right? So after some much needed rest and relaxation in Cajon Pass, I ended up getting a ride around the bobcat fire closure from a trail angel named Carol. She had been shuttling hikers around this fire closure all season, and thanks to her, I was able to get back on the trail with relative ease. Lots of overgrowth in this section. And the trail looks like that. There's just not much you can do. I'll just go through it. It's really not that bad. And my legs are getting kind of scuffed up. But, you know, all part of the trip. I'm looking like west, southwest. I'm pretty sure that is Los Angeles. More like Burbank, Santa Monica, like that region. It's really hard to see on the camera. It's easier to see in person, but so that would make the ocean right there behind it. It's kind of hard to see, but kind of blue on the horizon. It's pretty smoggy, but I'm pretty sure that that's the ocean. I knew coming into this section that this would be the closest that I would come to it. That could be the Pacific, which I didn't realize you could see it from the PCT, but pretty cool. I'm at the North Fork Ranger Station. It's at like mile 436. I'm at a water cache right now. This is a water cache, basically. Beautiful people called Trail Angels will come and stock this. It's kind of a dry stretch. This is towards the end of about a 17 mile water carry, I think, something like that. I'm feeling a lot better about continuing on this hike and just kind of not worried about Canada. I think that's what was hitting me early on is I'm just looking at the greater goal way too much and thinking that um, Canada is so far away. <laughs> it is and the desert can really get me down but I'm just uh, trying to hike day by day and look forward to little things like getting to a water cache or getting to the KOA campground where there's supposedly a swimming pool and a hot tub and I'm probably gonna zero there. You know, I'm just gonna zero when I feel like it. I'm not gonna worry about like, oh, I can't zero here. There's already people like calculating miles, like, oh, you gotta, you gotta hit like 20 miles a day if you're gonna make it to Canada by October 1st. I'm not even gonna worry about that. Like, if I make it through California, or if I make it to Mount Whitney, or if I make it to Yosemite, or even if I just decide to call it quits at the KOA, <laughs> Like, whatever, man. I'm just not as committed to doing this whole thing as I think I was when I got my permit. I'm just going to really try and focus on enjoying this thing. And if I'm tired, I'm going to stop. If my feet are hurting, I'm going to take some zeros. And that's the way I'm doing it. That's the way I should have done it from the beginning. But trying to push too hard, that's why I think a lot of people quit. And I don't want to quit and be, like, frustrated with through hiking. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy through hiking and that's all I'm trying to do man just enjoy this hike it's beautiful up here A new day. Pretty 
good drawing of a mountain lion. Oh, we're on the PCT, man. <laughs> oh, here's a completion monument. So this is where the PCT was completed as a single footpath from Canada to Mexico. Mm. Good way to start the day right here. Nice little uphill. I'm trying to get down the trail before it gets too hot. Pretty dark. Oh, what does that mean? I really don't like being in tunnels like this. Let's get out of here quickly. We're almost there, man. Yeah, uh, and the graffiti resumes. I just wanna take a look at some graffiti. Maybe this Mickey Mouse looking thing. Could be a little more creative than that. Looks like the guy from, uh, that looks uh, familiar. Maybe the guy from Spongebob? I don't know. I'm a little too old for Spongebob. I have not been impressed by the graffiti that I've seen. It's mostly just like dicks, smiley faces, like shit that you see everywhere. Nothing real creative. I thought you are so cool, California. You're supposed to be like super creative. You need to work on your graffiti game. This place is cool though. I feel like I'm in the red center in Australia. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Vasquez Rocks. Well, they filmed the 2001 version of Planet of the Apes, or at least parts of it right here, which I kind of liked that movie. I thought it was pretty good. Ape no kill ape. It definitely looks otherworldly. I can see why they chose this place for so many successful Hollywood movies. Star Trek, The Twilight Zone, um, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, really cool. This crazy fault line. All right. Here, this is easier to see. Look at the rock, though. That's how it juts up. It's incredible. I'm on the other side of the rocks now. This might be the scenes from movies, I don't really know. They're definitely really cool to look at. I would hang out here all day, but it's gonna be really hot and Agua Dulce is only like a mile away. 104 today is what it's supposed to be. This is tiny. I've never seen one this small. Dude, this skunk won't get off the trail. I really don't want to be that extra smelly hiker, you know? <laughs> Come on, skunk. What is it doing, man? All right, all right. You ain't gotta point that thing my way.
There it goes, everybody. There it goes. PCT Wildlife 2021. He keeps turning around and saying goodbye. It's like a love story. So I just set my tent up in the heat of the day. Was about to do a little siesta. And I'm not kidding you, there's a huge rattlesnake like two feet from my tent. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll flip the camera around and show you guys. So I'm just gonna lightly open my tent up here near the top. Don't fail me now, zipper. See him? Dude, he's right there, dude. It's a huge snake. Definitely a western rattler. He's looking at me. Bro, I don't want any trouble. Oh, there he goes. Look at that tail, man. I don't think he's coming towards me, so that's good. <laughs> this is why I set my tent up during siesta time. I don't want any trouble, dude. Just keep on going. We can both go live our lives. We can coexist on this planet. Dude, look at that rattle, man. Look at that thing. So now I'm, now I'm kind of conflicted. I might, should I move my tent? I mean, there's a rattlesnake like feet away from my tent, just slithering around. He's kind of moved now, but I'm just so exhausted. It is a very hot day in June. There's a heat wave coming through right now, and it's just been some of the hottest days that I've ever been out on a trail the last uh, the last couple days specifically. Even in like the siesta time, it's just like unbearable. You can't sleep. I've just been night hiking. Um, I've been hiking the last few uh, few nights with this girl I met, Rebecca. She doesn't have a trail name yet, but uh, it's been nice having company hiking at night. I'll do it alone, but it is a bit creepy, you know. Um, just always thinking of the mountain lion uh, thing. They are they are out there. There's also bears in this area, so it's nice having somebody to hike with. This is a screenshot of where I was and in relation to the heat wave and I heard it was like 113 in Palmdale, California, which is fairly close by. But yeah, man. Incredibly hot days. It, it's been really cool hiking at night. It's different. I feel more awake viewing the night sky. So like, you know, we'll take breaks and just look at the sky, the sky and it's super dark out here. Really nice clear skies too. And right now the moon is like in between new and first quarter. So it's just like a small sliver. So there are a lot of stars that are out. I feel like I've been doing this these last like four days with just no sleep, just like sleep deprived. I feel like starting this stretch was easy, but when the heat started coming in, you could really feel it. I thought there wouldn't be a difference because it has been in like the low 90s. And I'm like, ah, you know, 90s, 100, what's the difference? But no, you can feel it, man. There's definitely a tipping point. I'm just been really careful with picking out my siesta spots, making sure there's good shade. Like there's these big oak trees here. All the comments and gut hooks are saying, yeah, this is a good spot for a siesta, plenty of shade. Ideally, it's a good place with shade and water. And just a huge shout out to all the trail angels here that are putting water at the water caches. I, I probably would have bailed on this section, honestly, if the wa wasn't water at a, a few of the specific water caches. Huge shout out to all them doing that. It's like, I mean, I'm the one hiking the trail, but it's like the amount of people that get you to the point to even be able to do that is is what's so incredible about doing these things. Pretty though. Yeah, really pretty. 500 miles on the PCT in a burned area. <laughs> Very cool.
This place right here is called Hiker Town. It's at mile 517, and it's one of the most bizarre places I've ever stayed at. It's located just south of the LA Aqueduct portion of trail, which is known as one of the hottest stretches on the entire PCT. It was mid-June at this point, and with a heat wave scorching California, I finally decided to skip up to the Sierra. Kennedy Meadows is known as the start of the Sierra, and it sits at roughly mile 700, but before I got to Kennedy Meadows, I ended up in the town of Tehachapi, where I split a hotel room with a couple other hikers. This was a great group of people to be around. They called themselves the Blob, and they all set out to finish up the rest of the desert from Tehachapi. However, by the time I made my way to Kennedy Meadows and was ready to hit the trail again, I ended up meeting up with a lot of them by the time I started the Sierra. Cheers. Where did you guys start today? I think that's Mount Whitney. So glad to be out of the desert. Such a good decision, skipping ahead. We're up here right now, almost 10,000 feet. Pretty sure this is where we've come from the last three days. I think that's Elancha Peak. And we kind of came in through where that little meadow is. Pretty cool to be able to see the ground that you've covered. We've got about another mile left. This is Cottonwood Pass right here. Supposedly there's a lake and I'm gonna camp at on the other side of this hill right here. This is looking to the south. Pretty incredible view. I just crossed over into Sequoia National Park. Getting a little rain today, as you can maybe see. This is the first day that I've hiked in rain on the entire PCT. I'm not kidding you. All the desert never hiked in rain. I did sleep in rain um, one day in the town of Julian. So I actually wasn't even on the trail, but that just tells you how dry it's been out here. I'm actually gonna be very likely trying for the summit of Mount Whitney tomorrow morning for sunrise. Hopefully the weather permits. Kennedy Meadows was fun. It's sort of like a big celebration for everybody making it through the desert. It's at mile 700 for those that don't know. 
but um, it didn't feel as um, rewarding for me just because I skipped that last 200 miles. Um, maybe I'll go back and do those 200 one day, but for right now, I'm just glad to be in the mountains. I slept at Chicken Spring Lake, which is last night, which is over 11,000 feet. I've been in the Sierra now for about three days. Some pretty tough climbs. The elevation, I can definitely feel the elevation. Mount Whitney is 14,505 feet. It is the tallest mountain in the lower 48 United States. So I'm really hoping I get to summit that tomorrow. We'll see though, weather permitting, I'm not gonna take any chances. It's super exposed. I definitely don't wanna be up there if it's lightning. But yeah, man, so glad to be in the Sierra. Scary looking clouds over there. There it is, that's Mount Whitney. It's the tallest mountain in the lower 48 United States. What's up? He's like, hey dude. What's up? Y'all got any food? It was cold. Oh. <laughs> Alright, This is Guitar Lake. I don't know if I see it, but okay. Feeling slow already, but it's kind of the same way I was feeling. Well, not doing Mount Whitney on this hike. So I actually turned around because I was feeling the effects of elevation, but shortly after I made the decision, we heard a loud thunderclap in the distance and everyone was heading down to avoid the lightning. I pretty much just rested the rest of the day and waited out the rain, but I should have taken the fact that I struggled with the elevation a little more seriously at this point. It is a new day.
So this is a few miles before Forrester Pass, which is the tallest point on the entire PCT at 13,153 feet. And unfortunately, this is the last clip I have from my hike. Not long after this point, I started to feel really nauseous. I had a weird headache. I was just feeling really dizzy and tired. And all these are symptoms of acute mountain sickness, which is also known as AMS or altitude sickness. I started to feel this way at just over 12,000 feet. So I knew that the worst thing I could do was try to force myself up and over the pass, which was still another 1,000 plus feet. One of the guys that I was hiking with actually turned around with me and I went back down the mountain. And initially when I did that, I started to feel a lot better. So me and him parted ways. He continued north and I headed back south. My plan was to get to Cottonwood Pass, which was the closest exit that was open. My plan was to stop at one of the two ranger stations on the way back if my symptoms worsened, which is actually what I ended up having to do. I stopped by the Tyndall ranger station, but unfortunately there was no ranger there and I was just feeling like absolute shit. A storm rolled in and I just set my tent up and I ended up camping there that night. It was a long night, man. One of the scariest nights I've ever had in the backcountry, to say the least. Um, I kept waking up like gasping for air and even like while laying down at a rest, my heart was just racing in my chest. I felt like I was having a heart attack. And actually by the morning, um, early in the morning, after like a really long night of just feeling like I was permanently bonked, um, I ended up pressing the SOS on my Garmin. So after being in touch with emergency services, back and forth, like texting through the Garmin, a ranger hiked out to the Tyndall Ranger Station and met up with me and took my vitals and um, I really didn't want to be flown out of there. So I ended up uh, hiking back. I was kind of feeling a little better by the time the ranger got there. And I think just getting moving really helped me. Um, but I ended up hiking with the ranger back to the Crabtree Ranger Station, which is where I stayed the next night. And to make a long story short, I was able to hike out to Cottonwood Pass on my own two feet. Um, but I did struggle again. It's sort of like my altitude ceiling was getting lower and lower the longer that I stayed out there. And actually like the symptoms were turned again really hard when I got towards like Chicken Spring Lake. I think that's around 11,000 feet or so. But um, yeah, man, actually some other hikers had to carry my pack uh, down towards, down to like Horseshoe Meadow, which is where I ended up hitching into the town of Lone Pine. But yeah, that was, uh, that was quite the stretch. So after all that, I thought I might skip ahead even further and finish up the PCT starting north of the Sierra. But before then, I actually took a lot of time off. One of the first things I did was I went into Yosemite Valley, which was just incredible. Yeah, that was a really good decision. So after that, I took a bus to San Francisco, which I'd never been there either. I saw some of the sights and walked across the Golden Gate Bridge, which was really pretty fun. I'm walking across the Golden Gate Bridge. After that, I made my way to Lake Tahoe, where I was actually planning to get back on the trail. But at this time, there were some rather large fires breaking out all across the West. And I know fires happen every year, but seeing them in person was new to me. Across the lake from Lake Tahoe, I could see smoke from the Tamarack fire, which closed the portion of trail that I was planning to get back on at. I ended up taking a bus further north so I could get back on the trail elsewhere. And now I could see smoke from the Dixie fire. My new plan was to get back on the trail near the town of Chester. And I got to the town of Susanville, which is really close by and I could just see smoke everywhere. And actually a lot of the town had already lost power. This is fucking crazy, man. That's the sun. That's when I realized that my PCT adventure was over. It just was not the year for me. I ended up hitchhiking into Reno, Nevada and I caught a flight back home. And I feel like I made a good decision when I looked out the window of the plane and I could just see smoke everywhere. Please join us in our efforts to comply with the federal mask mandate and safely care for one another by quickly replacing your face covering. Over your nose and mouth after briefly taking a bite of food or some of your drink. If there's anything we can do to make your flight more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask. Now stay back for lives and enjoy the flight.
conclusion, the PCT absolutely beat my ass. I definitely failed at trying to walk from Mexico to Canada, and I only ended up hiking about 600 or so miles, but I'm still glad that I tried to do it. Every night when I was on the trail, I marked a waypoint with my Garmin, and looking at that map with all my waypoints scattered across it is pretty cool. For me, making it this far would not have been possible without the support of countless trail angels, PCT volunteers, trail crews, park rangers, and the support of my friends and family. I really hope that I can make a sequel to this film at some point in the future, but until then, I hope this documentary serves as a good look into what it's like to fail at trying to thru-hike the Pacific Crest Trail. So alright everyone, that's going to be the movie. Um, I don't really have a good explanation of why I shot these clips from my car, but I guess that I'm, in, I'm back in the real world now, so uh, this was the best that I could do. Maybe one of these days I'll have a studio, I'll be able to make more professional looking films, but this was my first go at a long form documentary. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it. So, uh, thanks for watching everybody. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the next film or we'll see you in the next video.